Hey, it's Donnie, and welcome to part four of the Getting Started with Tinker series. Our last episode, if you don't remember, was about physics and animation. We learned how to create a sprite that can walk and jump, and we also discussed the gravity code and how it works. So if you take a look, you can see our sprite. He can walk and he can jump. And today, we're going to be learning a bit more about how to create a platformer. We're going to create a few platforms, and we're also going to create an enemy. So we're going to be going over uh, collision detection as well. Now, this stuff is really important. These uh, concepts, especially when you're trying to make any kind of game in Tinker. So this is definitely going to be quite an important episode. So the first thing we're going to do is start talking a bit more about gravity, because watch how our, our character acts. So one, we can do like a double jump, which isn't that good. You don't want to double jump like that. So we're just going to change the gravity a little. It's not going to be perfect, but we are going to make it a little better. So let's start talking about our gravity code. So if we go down, we will see our gravity is right here. Now, it says to 0 by 10. Now what this means is this is our x and this is our y. So we can take a look at that. If we go 10 and 10, we'll notice that when we jump, our character will go to the right because it's increasing the x value. He'll actually start getting pulled to the right. See that? And he starts accelerating over time. Now we're going to set that back to 0 because we don't want our character having almost like x, x, uh, x axis gravity. So let's go ahead and set this to 12 and see what kind of behavior we get now. So we can still do our double jump but it's not as good. Well, we still have that really big jump. So maybe we'll go 14, try that out, see how that works. I kind of like the 14. It feels like a, a, a more natural jump. That's good. We'll stick with that. We'll stick with that. Um, so if you remember, we have our rotation style, our directions, we have all of our animations, and we have all of our controls. So we can do our jumping, and notice how he faces the right direction when we go left and right. Even when we're jumping, he still has the proper annotation, animations, because, especially because of these if statements here. So what we're doing is we're saying, oh, if the up arrow is pressed, you know, change the Y, animate, walk. But that's only going to execute for a second. Then the right arrow code down here is going to execute. So we have point and direction, 90 degrees, change X by 10 pixels, then animate the walk. So it's pretty easy to, if you just have these if statements and you're not locking up your th main thread, it's really easy to get things like diagonal movement like that. So we can jump back, we can jump forward. So that stuff's not too hard to do. Now, if we want to start our platformer, well, we need a new sprite. So we're going to go to Add Actor right here. And I'm going to go to the Media Library. And what I'm going to do is you see I already have a campfire here. And we're going to be using that later. But for now, we're just going to search Platform. And I'm going to use this green platform. It doesn't really matter which one you use. I like the green one, though. And we're going to go to our red monster. And let's, let's run this code first. And notice that. That platform, it falls. Why does that platform fall? Now, that's a very interesting thing. One reason is because we started physics. We started gravity, right? Just because the code is in the monster doesn't mean that it doesn't affect the grass platform. Certain things will affect the whole game. And the start physics is something like that. It's going to affect the whole game. We can even see some examples of this. We put these on the same level. They fall at the same rate. So our gravity is also global. It's being set for every sprite, even if the sprite is created after the code is set. And that's the kind of stuff that creates a lot of bugs. So you have to know which things are like that. So of course you don't want that in your game. So let's go ahead, we'll reset our character about right there. Let's see if that's good, that's good. And we'll set our platform right here. Now that's where we want our platform, right? We don't want it to fall. It's actually quite easy to fix that issue. We're just gonna go to events, on start. And what we're gonna do is we are gonna tell the physics code that we have a static value by setting static to true. Now I just went to physics and I went down to the one, two, three, four, fifth block and I set it to true. Now watch that. Now our platform does not fall and our character can jump and notice that he, the gravity stops, stops, right? 
because our platform is set as something the character can land on. It's not going to push him through to the bottom. So we have a basic platform right there and everything is working pretty good. Our next goal will be to create a few more of those platforms and luckily it's quite easy. If we go to more right here, we can just duplicate it and we'll put it right there and we'll test that out. Always smart to test your code. And look at that, we have a nice, nice platform. And then we're gonna make another one. And this one is gonna be more of a horizontal jump, something like that. So let's take a look, see how it looks. Good. And can we fall? Well, we wanna be able to fall through these platforms, but if we're touching them, it's gonna be a bit of an issue. So we're gonna move this a little bit more to the right. Let's try that out. Now, if we miss our jump, we fall right down, right? So that is a good place in a game where to, to put some kind of object that you shouldn't hit. Now, first, let's make sure the jump is possible, of course. Okay, very easy jump. Now, let's go ahead and let's add some kind of obstacle, some kind of hazard, right? And I'm just going to go with fire. I wanted fire, and I found the campfire uh, sprite when I was working on this. And what we're going to do is we're going to make it much smaller. We actually haven't talked a lot about how to set the size. There's a few ways to do it, but what I like is just to put, put it in here, put it where I want it, and then to start changing the size of it using those arrows. See how I have that diagonal arrow? That lets me adjust the size. And I'm going to put it right about there. And that looks pretty good. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump, I'm going to jump, and now I'm going to fall. And let's go you know of course nothing happens but we can see that we are touching the campfire now right so let's take a look at that now what we want is we want to detect when our sprite hits the campfire right that's called collision detection it's the it's the way to detect if two sprites are touching so we're going to go ahead and work on that now so we're going to go to our campfire and we're going to say on start we are gonna go forever, and we're gonna make an if statement. And what we're gonna do is say, if we're detecting the monster, the monster needs to say something. But if you think about it, that could be actually a quite a difficult thing to do because we'd have to send a message to our main sprite saying, oh, you've been hit. But it kind of makes more sense, right, for the monster itself to detect if it's hitting something. Certain games might work differently, but for our game, we're actually not going to put any code in here at all. We're going to go straight to our monster, and we're going to create a second on start. Now, we haven't actually talked about the fact that you can create a second on start. You can have as many as you want, and what this means is there's two threads. And if you don't know what threading is in programming, threading is when different pieces of code can run at the exact same time so when we hit on start notice how they're both dark green that both have that green outline right and that means that they're both running at the same time so what we can do is we can have our normal movement code here our physics our gravity and then later we can have an if statement that checks if we are touching the campfire and that actually is also in physics we have a collision option so if collided with and then all we need to do is choose our sprite and we choose campfire so if you've collided with the campfire then we need to do something there's a lot of things we could do we could maybe go to like control and we could stop all we could try that out and what that does is kind of uh, watch that and the whole game ends whole game resets right and that's because we've stopped all the code I don't like that too much because usually you would have a game over screen or life or health something like that so what we're gonna do is actually just go ahead and do a say and we're just gonna say I don't know ouch fires hot and now notice it's saying ouch constantly it's not it's never going away and that's because we're just saying say now see it doesn't work now see it's not going off now because what happened is when we restarted our code there was some flag that was set for the collision already or we might have even accidentally clicked the forever loop that can happen sometimes and even when you reset it you might actually see an if statement like this trigger so let's go let's go practice that again let's go try that out again 
and we got an ouch and we go away and notice it does not go away the ouch stays and that's because of how this say block works this say block it says ouch and that's it it does nothing else for you it doesn't go away it doesn't have any color or size so we're gonna get rid of that and we're gonna say ouch for two seconds and what that is gonna do I would do one second what that is gonna do is it's gonna go away after one second and we can test that out now so and if we jump away it will go away on its own so that is a basic example of how you can do platforming and how you can do collision detection in Tinker um, episode 5 we're gonna try to kind of clean up a little bit of the movement we still have a couple animation bugs we're also going to work on adding like health so like oh every second you're touching the campfire you lose health but you can jump and get out of it right so to kind of make our first level we are also going to start talking a bit about how to have like a background in your program of course because this white screen is quite boring so that will be the goal of episode five so i hope you had a good time watching this i hope you learned a little about tinker please subscribe to the channel i would appreciate it greatly and i thank you for watching goodbye